One night, I happened to look up at the night sky. No matter where I turned my eyes, countless stars were scattered across it, so bright and so close, it felt as if I could reach out and touch them. But we know the truth. The distance between us and those stars is beyond imagination. The closest star to Earth, Proxima Centauri, is about 4.24 light years away. Even at the speed of light, it would take over four years to get there. And with current human technology, it could take thousands or even tens of thousands of years. No matter how far science advances, we can't break the speed of light, because that's the fundamental law of this universe. And yet, the universe itself is expanding faster than light. As if that weren't bad enough. Even if eternity passed, would we still be unable to see even the tiniest fraction of the universe? In 1966, the science fiction TV series Star Trek aired. In its universe, humanity used a technology called warp drive, allowing them to travel faster than the speed of light. It may have been pure fantasy back then, but the idea was so captivating, it sparked the imagination of viewers around the world. The thought of freely sailing through space, what could be more thrilling? If we look back at human history, imagination has always been the seed that grows into new technology, and warp drive was no exception. The Mexican physicist Miguel Alcubierre had been a fan of Star Trek since childhood, and he began wondering how this fascinating concept of a warp drive could be made real. In 1994, he proposed a theoretical method for traveling faster than light. The concept was quite shocking. We usually assume that to move something faster, we have to increase its speed, accelerate the object itself. But Alcubierre thought differently. Instead of applying force to the object, he proposed manipulating the very fabric of space surrounding it, more precisely, the structure of space-time itself, to surpass the speed of light. It became known as the Alcubierre Drive. The Alcubierre Drive doesn't accelerate the spacecraft. It works by distorting the space around it. More specifically, it compresses space in front of the spacecraft and expands space behind it. Here's how the space around the spacecraft changes. The expanding space behind pushes the spacecraft forward, while the contracting space in front pulls it along. As a result, the spacecraft moves like a surfer on a wave, staying still relative to the wave itself, yet riding the distortion of space at faster than light speed. The speed of light limit applies only to moving objects, not to space itself. Space can expand at any speed. That's why the universe is currently expanding faster than light. And likewise, a spacecraft using an Alcubierre drive could do the same. In theory, the Alcubierre drive could reach speeds up to 9,000 times the speed of light. At this point, you might wonder, compressing and expanding space? How is that even possible? According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, space is a flexible entity. It can be compressed or expanded. It's the warping of space that explains why extreme objects like black holes and galaxies arise, why space itself can expand, and why gravity pulls planets and stars together. The Alcubierre drive is based directly on this theory of general relativity. Using Einstein's equations, Alcubierre discovered a solution that locally compresses and expands space around a spacecraft. But in the process, he ran into a serious problem. Operating the Alcubierre drive would require an enormous amount of energy. In 2012, physicist Harold White estimated that, theoretically, the energy required would be equivalent to the mass of Jupiter. But that's not the end. There's an even bigger problem. The required energy isn't the ordinary kind we're familiar with. It involves matter with negative mass, in other words, negative energy. This material, known in physics as exotic matter, has never been observed in experiments, and it remains unclear whether it actually exists in the universe or even can exist. Even Alcubierre himself once called the need for negative energy nonsense. But if a theory holds up and the equations work, that means the concept doesn't violate the laws of math or physics. And throughout the history of science, there have been many cases where theoretical predictions were later confirmed through observation or discovery. The Higgs boson was theoretically predicted in 1964 and finally confirmed in 2013, almost 50 years later. Gravitational waves were predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity in 1915 and finally observed in 2016, an entire century later. Perhaps negative energy is the same, something we just haven't discovered yet, waiting somewhere in the universe to be found. Of course, just because something works in theory doesn't mean it necessarily exists, but even the mere possibility that it could exist is enough to set our hearts racing. That possibility alone drives us to take one step further to keep moving forward. And one day, if that possibility becomes reality, if we truly surpass the speed of light, we will come to realize once again Beyond the limits we once believed unreachable, a universe of endless possibility has been waiting for us all along.